All right, we're ready for some farming simulator. Let's get rolling. Turn on that, turn on that, and here we are. Farming simulator playing our Elm Creek run here still. Um, making some progress. Obviously, we've got the sugar recently set up. Uh, all that we've got left is to get cows. Cows will give us our last two ingredients, and then we are making some cakes. So, let's see. What's the state of things? How are sugar animals? How are chickens doing? Chickens are stocked up. How is our production doing? Strawberries, got water, got water, got water. Um, sorghum, uh, we're out of sorghum itself, so we're good there. Bread, nothing stuck falling there at the moment. We're actually almost out of flour anyway, so it's not going to worry about that. Sugar, we're basically done with that. So yeah, everything's produced right now at the moment. Um, it is April, and let's see here. I guess we can look at this. Sugar, best month to sell is July, so we're coming up on that soon. Obviously, we know eggs is November, and of course, bread is January, along with the silage, which we do not currently have. All right, well, that's all that. Uh, how was the state of our fields over here? 
We have planted the sorghum, but we have not fertilized it yet. We'll do that next month along with herbicide. These both look good. And how are we doing on the uh, sugar beets? I believe the sugar beets have been uh, herbicided. We already get, obviously, they get fertilized at the time of um, planting. And we will need to put some lime down at some point. But I guess we could go put some lime down now. I don't think it hurts anything. So let's grab our tractor here and see if we can get some lime down on the uh, sugar beet field. All right, we'll get that rolling. Um, other than that, anything on the used lot that we care about? I mean, we do have this thing, remember that. We just don't have the horsepower to pull it. And that is that. Would be nice if we could though. Almost a, almost a direct swap. It's only a few thousand bucks more than this thing. But just don't have the horsepower for it. We're closer, <laughs> but, but not enough. All good. We will. We'll get. Maybe we'll get there someday. Uh, actually, we'll probably just stick with the tractors that we have now. I don't see if there's any reason to upgrade our tractors anytime soon, if ever, for the, for the conditions of this particular save. Stuff dropped off and um, yeah, ready to fast forward after that. Obviously, we'll be able to do some harvests here in this stream. So should be able to harvest both the uh, sorghum and the uh, uh, sugar beets. Hey Shane, how's it going? Glad you could join. Ah, my day's, go day's going okay. Doing doing all right today. It's a nice Wednesday, halfway through the week. Although I do have a a bit more busy Saturday coming up, so unfortunately, less rest than usual this Saturday, but that's all right. My son made it to the regional level of the science fair. And by that, I mean, I made it to the regional level of the science fair. I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> I did a lot of work on his science project. Um, but we got that coming up this weekend. I mean, obviously, I support him and I'm happy for him and I'm glad... Probably would have been fine if he just got an A on his science project, and that's where it ended, quite to be perfectly honest, but it is what it is. Ah, it's Thursday there. Nice. Well, I guess it'll be Thursday for me soon enough.
You finally caved in a uh, plur splurge on a real gaming PC pre-built uh, from Redux. Yeah, I've, I've, I've looked at Redux stuff uh, a few times myself, actually. Uh, but it has everything I could want, including a 4060 GPU. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I, I, they look good. They look fine. I mean, honestly, I don't see anything wrong with them. Uh, obviously, I've never personally owned one, but they, I, I've definitely considered it for sure. It looks 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 like it's got everything you would possibly need. Simple. That's the one thing I like about the the Redux PCs, whatever. Is that it's a simple process, right? Just pick a couple settings that you can you know you can tweak a couple things, and but for the most part, they've got it all worked out and. Get you a PC. Done. Easy. I mean, you go to some websites like that, like uh, Cyber Power or iBuyPower, any of those. There's like a bazillion options. So it's sometimes you're just like, you know, you, you don't even know what to get. You know, it's just so many options that you're just kind of like, okay, I don't know. There's 40 different options for hard drives and 20 different GPUs and whatever. And yeah, I mean, you could do your research and kind of get exactly what you want based on your research. But for a, for someone who just does doesn't really care, someone who's not planning on building their own PC ever, they just need something simple, and I think the simpler sites work for that. Uh, whereas if you're going to build your own PC and you're like, you know what, I can build my own PC, which is kind of how I look at it, I can absolutely build my own PC, but I might as well go buy it from them and just get a little bit of a warranty, and they can do all the work of cleaning up the the cables and all that kind of stuff. So I I do the research of what I would build with my own PC, and then then I go to like, for example, for my current two PCs, they're both cyber power. They do all the work after I do all the research. But most people aren't going to want to do all that. Most people just want to go say, hey, look, I want something as simple as buying an Xbox. You don't have to go pick out a bunch of options for an Xbox. <laughs> so you might as well make PC gaming PC buying along those lines of simplicity. And it works. Do I think it's worth it to buy a MacBook to play Farming Simulator on? I mean, if you like Mac uh, Apple products, I'm pretty sure it would play it just fine. Uh, I'll definitely let you know what it, how it does and how much I like it after I get it. Yeah, hopefully hopefully it looks works out for you. Yeah, I definitely agree. Redux stuff was very simple and it was super easy to change the stuff to what I wanted. Like I changed it to an AMD CPU, picked uh, what GPU I felt was good for. Yeah, exactly. Basically, you got like two, two couple choices. Which CPU do you want? How much RAM do you want? And which GPU do you want? I mean, I, I, there might be a couple other choices, but it's, it's very simple. Very, very minimal choicing. And, um, and it's just... I don't know if they even let you pick out the motherboard. I think they... I think the motherboard just is, is a basic motherboard depending on which G, uh, CPU you pick. Um, I remember the last time I looked at it. Like I said, much simpler. Which is nice. There's a lot of people that want to get into gaming that might be over uh, overwhelmed by most websites. Let's put it that way. Plus, I don't think they charge much for the build itself. I want to say that the build was like 75 bucks for the cost for building it. I mean, that's that's nothing. It cost me more than $75 worth of hassle when I build my own PC. You know what I mean? Like trying to get everything working correctly. The time, if you, if you added up the couple hours it might take to make sure all the drivers are updated, kind of, you always run into some problem with like, oh, it doesn't quite boot up properly or something doesn't quite load up properly. You always have... I always have those one problem when you build your own PC. And it's like, um, to add up the hours that it costs to do all that, it might be worth 75 bucks right there. Of course, I had to buy a new video card recently. Even though my CPU, my computer is less than a year old. Well, it might be right at a year old, right? I think I've only had it about a year. So technically, the old video card would normally be under warranty. However, the reason it broke is basically my fault because I put it, I plugged in a uh, a uh, cable. The cable that I plugged in basically melted inside the CPU or inside the GPU's uh, the port there, and uh, I don't think they'll I don't think they'll warranty that because that's that is a aftermarket cable that is not associated with the uh, the GPU or the company that built it. So that's on me. Technically, I think I could have the cable company. They sent out a warning that they were getting melted cables. Uh, unfortunately, I was too late to redeem my redeem it. So it is what it is. Life goes on.
I like the GPU. I mean, the GPU I got now it works. I went from an NVIDIA uh, 4080, which is a great GPU, obviously. And I bought a uh, AMD. Which one did I get? The uh, boxes are in here somewhere. Whatever the like second best uh, in line AMD um, or um, uh, graphics card is. I forget what the what the second best one was. But anyway, it's not the top top tier. It was the one just below that. But it it works. It's been great. Honestly, I haven't noticed any performance difference between it and the forty eighty. And it's got more RAM than the 4080, or GPU RAM, which is cool. Alrighty. Um, what do we need to do? Uh, Boeing's done. We got to nitrogen that up here next month, along with the fields over there. Herbicide. No, I think we're good. Let's fast forward. Yeah, I had the 4080. Uh, I got the 70... Yeah, 7600 XT, Mike. Sounds right. I, I'd have the box. I just don't remember. I'm more familiar with NVIDIA. Uh, so I don't remember which one it was for the AMD ones. It's around here somewhere. But it's, it's, it's working great. I'm happy with it. Let me see, which one is it? Maybe I still have my search history. Truth be told, it was the best one they had at Best Buy uh, because I couldn't wait. I had stuff to do. Um, the Saturday that my other one broke, so I had to like just go literally buy. I, I went into Best Buy and said, "What is the best graphics card you guys have?" So that is where it went. Yeah, I think it's the seventy six hundred XT or something like that. Something like that. So it's been good. Anyway, um, what were we doing? Oh yeah, fer fertilizing and herbiciding. Truth be told, I was actually having some weird problems with um, some things that might have been related to the old GPU anyway. So the fact that I swapped up to an AMD, it might have actually just been a, just a good swap all in all. In all. Not to just, not to, you know, badmouth NVIDIA at all, because I've, I've had NVIDIA graphics cards forever. And I, you know, I've liked them most of the time. So I might have just gotten a bad one. Who knows? I they need something with crazy amount of GPU RAM, but eight gigabytes was fine. Yeah, eight gigabytes should be fine. The only reason I use the extra RAM is because I do a lot of the video rendering, and uh, I can use the graphics card to support the video rendering process. And I assume if you're using your graphics card to support the video rendering, it will use some of the graphics memory for that process. I guess that could be a wrong assumption, but I assume that's how it works. Going from a pre-built Best Buy that I threw in at T 1050 Ti. Uh, and dual channel 16 gigs and do anything else. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's a good upgrade then. Oh, nice. 3D printer designer. Cricket P that's pretty cool. That's awesome. I'm, I'd like to get into 3D printing, 3D printing stuff at some point. I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool how that works. You looked at some PCs, but you didn't think it was worth it to buy like a used PC. Yeah, I mean, buying a used PC can be dangerous sometimes because, um... Inevitably, there's going to be something wrong that you have to replace at some point anyway. I guess it's kind of like buying a used car, right? Yeah, it's got some mileage on it. Something's probably going to go wrong sooner with a used car. It still might be cheaper than buying a brand new, you know, car. Just like a cheap PC might be cheaper than buying a brand new PC is buying a used one and then fixing whatever's wrong with it. But I guess when you're talking, the difference between a car and a PC is tenfold, you know, <laughs> a 10x on the price. So when you're talking a couple thousand bucks, you might as well just buy a new one that you know was working. Uh, whereas in a car, you're obviously going to... There's more justification to save some money on a used car. AMD's making some amazing things. Hey, I mean, I've had Intel CPUs for the last several computers, but the ones I'm sitting on right now are both uh, AMDs as well. Uh, and because, again, I do... I wanted to do a lot of video rendering and stuff like that. And the AMD CPUs uh, have more cores, which theoretically helps with uh, rendering. So 
kind of where I'm at on those as well. So yeah, now I have AMD CPUs and AMD graphics cards, which is awesome. And I've set my, let me see, my, my AMD CPUs are the uh, 7950, 7950X. So they're both of them, both, both my PCs. Actually, my streaming PC and my gaming PC are both 7950X CPUs. Truth be told, the only difference between my two PCs was the graphics card because I went with the 4080 on the gaming PC and then I only went with the Intel graphics card on the, um, even though it's got an AMD G CPU, I have the Intel graphics card because obviously Intel's come out with their own line of graphics cards. I went with the Intel graphics card for my streaming PC because it doesn't need that much graphics. Um, and that's actually, that thing's actually worked just fine, honestly. And it truth be told, I went overkill on that too. I bought the top of the line Intel graphics card, which I think is all, like on on par with like a 4060 or something like that, which is way overkill for a streaming PC. But uh, it was it, it was pretty cheap though. It was much cheaper, so I went that route just just to see how it works, and I've I've been actually pretty happy with it. It's been been just fine. Oh, I need a herbicide uh, fertilizer over here as well. Got distracted. But yeah, same amount of RAM, same hardware, uh, same motherboard as well. Like literally, they're identical PCs except <laughs> one's got a, one had a forty eighty and the other one had Intel, and that was literally the price difference. And the cases are a little bit different. I went with just a cheap case for the streaming PC and a kind of a nicer looking case for the gaming one. But they both look fine, honestly. I want to say there was a thousand dollar price difference between the two, though. If that tells you how much of a difference the graphics card will make. 4080, with everything else being identical, was a thousand dollars more than getting the exact same PC with an Intel GPU. <laughs> it's insane. If you want to get into 3D printing, definitely look into the Creality Creality brand, specifically the Ender 3 series. They're super affordable and they print amazingly. Cool. I definitely will look at that. I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted to get into 3D printing is because I know my kids would enjoy it too. They'd love to make like little designs that I could 3D print for them. You have two printers. You have an uh, Ender 3 V2 and an uh, Ender 3 S1 Pro. Nice. Pretty cool. Would be, would be something fun to do. I just realized this one is a bit wider, isn't it? So let me... Get you out of the way, my friend. Uh, yeah, 400 bucks for, uh, for the top, top one and 275 for the other one. It's actually not, it's not bad. I, I mean, one of the first color photorealistic printers that I bought was probably 300 bucks, something like that, you know? So for a 3D printer to be around the same price as a, 
as a, I guess, 2D printer, if you will, then that's not, that's not terrible. Especially if it works pretty well. And by by 300 bucks for a photo printer that was like years ago like you know what i mean like when those first started becoming big and mainstream the photo printers they were not cheap to begin with obviously now you can get a photo printer for like 100 bucks less but uh back in the day they were not cheap look at me saying back in the day as if i'm some <laughs> grizzled old veteran or something i don't know <laughs> i just i'm getting old i guess in computer lingo i'm i'm like 70 right i'm probably 70 years old like i said because computer stuff changes so much that i remember the dawn of the dawn of the iphone you know things like that I think if you still remember VHS and cassette players for audio, you are uh, you qualify as being old in technology terms. I mean, to be fair, I still remember record players, so <laughs> that's even worse. But I mean, I didn't do much with record like record players were like, I and mean, obviously they're still a thing from like for people who really like audio. But you know, when they were mainstream, I remember them. They were starting to be faded out, you know, phased out when I was a kid and cassettes were becoming more mainstream. Obviously VHS. I remember the uh, laser discs and stuff like that, but I think laser discs came out. But those, those are after VHS, right? Because those were, those were like the grandfather of the DVDs and things like that, I guess. Hey, double A truckling. How's it going? Uh, filament is also super cheap. One kilogram rolls. The last months and months is like, oh, that's not that bad. 20 to 50 bucks. That's not bad at all. I guess I qualify as an old in technology sense, but record players are making a comeback. Yeah, record players are definitely making a comeback. <laughs> they are for the, uh, the uh, person who is really into music. I guess the audio is... Is it because the audio is better or is it just because it's like a niche thing that's kind of Kind of cool, like collectors and stuff like that. I actually don't know. I assume there's some situations where the, maybe the audio is not better, but it's more, maybe it's more classic, you know, something like that. Who knows? I'm sure there's a, there's reasons why they do it the way they do it. All right. What are you? Oh, I need to do this other field. That's right. I mean, it's obviously people that love to have their collections of records hanging, you know, on their bookshelves and things like that, which definitely look better than a bunch of old CDs or anything. Like, nobody's collecting CDs, right? Like, very rare you're going to see that. <laughs> records, however, are cool. Like, that's a, that's a cool thing. To the younger people, it's a nostalgia thing. To people like me, it just sounds... But yeah, I, I assumed it probably does sound really good, honestly. So, that makes sense. I mean, personally, I don't listen to music. I, I do listen to music a lot, but not, not near as much as maybe most people who would be in that category of wanting to buy record players and stuff like that. However, I don't mind spending like a lot of money on some nice headphones and stuff like that. Just to make sure that the headphone part of it at least is comfortable and and has good audio quality.
doesn't sound perfect. There's little nuances. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the, that's the, isn't that the appeal a little bit that you have those little nuances? That's, that's the, the lack of perfection makes it sound better in a weird way. Is that, does that make sense to say that that way? Like, I guess I feel like there's such a thing as too perfect. You know what I mean? You want that, you want that artistic touch, right? Um, yeah, if that makes some sense. Gives a little bit of a, a little bit of extra that you won't get from like a perfect studio quality CD recording or you know a, a audio recording, I guess, like a on Spotify or something. Perfectly imperfect, <laughs> if that's the best way to say that. I mean, music's an art, right? I mean, how many paintings would you consider perfect? You know, they're perfect because they're, they're, they, they are what they are. They, they have imperfections, you know, imperfect brushstrokes or imperfect, you know, whatever. That's what makes them what they are. If it was just a photograph, which I mean, don't get me wrong, plenty of photographs are considered art, but I would say the photographs that are considered the most artful are the ones that are more, are less perfect. You know what I mean? Like it still kind of goes with that whole thing. A perfect staged and you know set up and whatever photograph that's not that's not as appealing as something that's more spontaneous and kind of captures that perfect moment but you know maybe that captures the perfect moment in an imperfect way because it just it adds a little bit of realism to it so yep it's interesting starting a new journey with my careers as an owner operator, least to purchase my trucking career. Are you talking about in real life or are you talking about in a video game? Because <laughs> in the world we live in now, when somebody says something like that, it could be either. And if it's real life, congratulations. Um, being an owner operator, that's awesome. Like that's a big, I, I, I don't know much about trucking. I mean, I've had family members that have done trucking stuff, uh, but I don't know that I know enough to, to talk about it. But I do know enough about trucking to understand that if you get to the point where you can own, you know, lease to own or own your own rig, that's a pretty big step. All right, fertilizing's done. Oh, did we do? Yeah, we did the we did the grass field. We did that first. All right, harvest settings done. Fertilizing's done. Um, chickens okay? I think the chickens are probably okay. Chickens are all right. We pick up any eggs. Eggs are good for another month. Um, and sugar price. We'll just take the sugar price real quick. I know it's going to be coming up here in a, but think two months, but we'll go ahead and keep an eye on it. Just, just in case it shifts a little bit. It happens. Bakery is pretty good, but the bakery doesn't hold much. So we'll wait a little bit longer. Actually, this is saying September now. We'll just keep an eye on it over the next couple months. All right. I think that's everything. Let's fast forward when do we do our next harvest sorghum is in august sugar beets are not until october or november depending on when did we do them delayed i think we did them delayed in real life well nice congrats that is a that is a huge first step that's awesome or n next step i should say that is pretty awesome i hope hope that is successful for you I don't know if I could ever be a trucker. I have much respect for you, though. I mean, I've seen enough of those YouTube shorts of people cutting off trucking, you know, semi trucks and things like that. I would not have the patience <laughs> to be a trucker. I just wouldn't. Oh, goodness. I would get so mad. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, I think uh, I think people need to respect 
truckers more. Realize that, you know, just because your little zippy car can zip in and out of traffic doesn't mean a truck can avoid you as easily as you think they can. And, uh, yeah, it's just people are stupid. <laughs> I can't handle stupid people. Um, but no, much respect for sure. All right. What are we doing today? Speaking of trucks. Was that one for lumber? That's a big old, big old tractor. Subsoiler. All right. Uh, we are mowing next month. Oh, yeah. We're checking the sugar price. Uh, huh. Do we really think it's going to go up? It's already at 525 at the fast food restaurant, which is literally right across the road, which is basically the highest price it can get to. 526 is the highest it says. I don't know that it's going to go any higher, to be honest. I think we go ahead and sell. I don't see any... I mean, if, if it goes up at all, it's going to be like a couple bucks. It's not... I'm not going to be too disappointed by that. It's not like it's going to go up to 600 bucks a thousand liters or anything. Oh, yeah. Farming in real life takes a lot of energy as well. 100%. Plus, farmers, they got to deal with a lot. They got to deal with a lot of regulations. They got to deal with a lot of, you know, I mean, if I'm sure there are very sensitive fuel prices changing. Um, other things that just can affect them and just really make make their profits kind of start dropping significantly. I mean, obviously, the big thing that farmers have to deal with is the uncontrollable, the weather. I mean, if the weather is bad, you have a bad year. That is what it is. I mean, I, I very distinctly remember. Uh, I could always tell when my grandfather had a good year. When my grandfather had a good year, we'd all get like $150 cash for Christmas or something like that. You know, some, which for us at, you know, 10, 12 years old was a lot of money. So when my grandfather had a good year, we got a lot of money for Christmas. When my grandfather had a bad year, I got a basketball for Christmas. You know what I mean? And obviously, as a kid, I didn't understand. But I'm grateful that my parents raised me with enough... Uh, knowledge of respect that I was typically just as thankful for the basketball Christmases as I was for the $150 Christmases. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping to raise my kids that way as well. <laughs> I don't know how good a job I'm doing, but you know, farming is it's hit or miss, you know, that is what it is. Actually, my dad was almost killed by a crash with a semi-truck when I was five. Um, was not his fault. It was not the semi-truck's fault either. Uh, my dad was driving behind some guy in a pickup truck. It was him, his wife, and then his sister on the on their outside. And the guy in the pickup truck, and they were, go they were going down like a little, you know, little two-lane highway or whatever, back, back roads highway in the middle of nowhere. And the guy in the pickup truck was going around the corner and went into the other into the other lane. He went into the oncoming traffic lane. Semi truck swerved to avoid the pickup truck, and unfortunately, my dad was behind him, and so he head on collision with my dad in a little tiny. I don't even know what kind of. It was like a tiny, tiny vehicle, tiny car. I mean, the way they tell the story is they basically had to peel my dad off the front of the of the uh, semi truck, and uh, he, uh, as he says, the last thing he remembers. Like, the last thing you remember, he doesn't remember anything else. The last thing he remembers was Peterbilt. That was, that was it. Obviously, my dad's still alive, thankfully. And, um, but he, uh, many, many months of, and I was too, too little to understand. I, I obviously, five years old, four or five years old, whatever it was, I was too little to understand that my, you know, my parents were gone for a long time. We were staying with my grandparents. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got, he's got metal rods all up and down his legs still to this day. He can't go through a metal detector at an airport without setting off all the alarms, things like that. But, and he's got, you know, he's had a lot of pain over the years that he's had to deal with, but he's been able to walk. He's been able to, you know, do things for the most part. And, uh, so very thankful that he survived, obviously, but pretty bad deal. Actually, the guy in the pickup truck whose fault with the entire accident was the semi truck clipped the side of his semi, his pickup truck. And unfortunately his, his, uh, his sister was killed. Uh, but it's, you know, it's sad, to, you know, that that happened, which is part of the reason why, even though my parents faced 
tens of thousands of dollars of medical beers, bills. They knowing that his sister was killed, they they never sued. They never that my parents have just absorbed the burden of those medical bills, and that is just that's how they've lived because they they just didn't feel like it was right to sue for somebody who lost their their family member like that. I don't know. Maybe in retrospect, they wish they had because at the end of the day, if they had sued, I'm sure insurance or something would have taken care of it anyway. But it just it was a different time, you know. This is what. 35 years ago. It was a kind of a different time, different place. People weren't suing all over the place. I don't think as much back then. So I think it had a little bit more of a, would have left a bad, worse taste in their mouth than maybe if it happened again today. And I'm sure the semi-truck driver felt bad. I mean, it's not his fault. There's, what could he do? There's nothing he could have done. So it's one of those awkward, sad situations that I'm sure truckers have to deal with is accidents that, you know, oftentimes they're not their fault and it's just, but they're, but obviously they're driving a vehicle that's big enough to, to hurt people. Cause I mean, it's just, it's, it's efficient at the end of the day. It's a, it's an efficient mode of transportation and it, uh, a lot of responsibility there. Oh, yeah, I've seen some bad accidents. Yeah, no, and obviously, you know, and I definitely, definitely have no doubt that, you know, God was watching over my parents that day or my dad that day. I mean, when I think about it, he would have been 24, 25 if I was like four or five or something like that. Maybe I, I might have even been three. I don't remember. I'd have to ask my mom. I know she said that my, my little sister was very young. Like, so I guess I would have been three, four, five, something around that range. And yeah, if that was the case, then. My dad's, you know, early to mid twenties. That's young, you know, that's real young. And I can't imagine, you know, when I look at my, my wife, you know, how she would have dealt with something happening to me, you know, when she was in her twenties, you know, like it, it hits home when you get a little older and you start understanding the ramifications of that situation. That's a lot to deal with for, you know, relatively new couple, you know, with three kids at home and, and whatnot. Again, thankfully, again, obviously, thankfully God was watching over him, but also thankfully we got, had grandparents to take care of us and good family support system, but yeah, guess guess God wasn't done with my dad yet. Thankfully, I've never been a serious car accident like that I've, I've i've had the most serious car accident i've had was me uh skidding on an icy road going around a corner and basically ending up in the middle of a, a field um well no i guess no actually that's not true that that is one uh could have been bad but thankfully no, no flipping or anything like that probably one that was worse than that was when my wife and i literally we'd been married two weeks two weeks after Ameri got married right she's got a brand new Pontiac G6 vehicle car that she bought. 
And we're driving to North Carolina because she's going to be, that's where she was going to be stationed at in the military. And so we're in the middle of East Texas somewhere. And we come up onto this highway intersection that very confusing highway intersection. And it's like, you're driving along and we're, in, you know, we're on the Texas, high, those, those back road, Texas highways, the speed limit's like 70 miles an hour. Okay. Like Texas don't care about speed. <laughs> they let you go, whatever. So we're going like 70 miles an hour. And we come up to this highway that suddenly just jerks to the right because there's another highway coming in. And, and so she tries, she didn't notice what was happening until it's too late. So she tries to jerk to the right to go with the thing, loses control. And we start spinning. And then we hit this, uh, this uh, sign, like it's like a road sign or whatever, like side impact on the road sign. I don't know how we didn't start flipping. And thankfully the side impact of the road sign was right on her door. Thankfully, she survived and everything like that. But that's probably the worst accident I've been in. Um, thankfully, the car was drivable. We kept doing what we had to do, but we had to get it fixed, obviously. But it was a it was a stressful situation. Um, accidents are, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, cars and cars are a great way to travel and great way to get from point A to point B. But I mean, they're definitely scary too. There's there's definitely you got to be respectful of those. I'm already terrified because my oldest daughter will be 16 in a few months. And, you know, it's scary. It's scary to think about your kid getting behind the wheel of a car for the first time and things like that. But we can't live in fear, right? We can't... Living in fear is a, is a very unhealthy and sad way to live your life. At some point, you just got to have some faith and <laughs> just leave it at that. Yesterday, a good friend of your parents passed away, but it's health issues. Well, I'm, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. That's 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 really sad. I mean, even health issues obviously are are something that can be sad. Even if you know it's coming, it's really sad. You know, it's uh never death is never a an enjoyable experience. I would imagine. I mean, the only time that I could see that even then, the only way that I could see death being like almost a not, a, not an enjoyable, but like a peaceful thing would be if somebody was suffering, right? Somebody's suffering through like some medical issue or something like that. You know, like my grandfather, he was, he was suffering for a while towards the end. And so I think my dad, I mean, obviously he was very, very devastated and very sad, but they knew it was coming. And so when it, when it finally happened, you know, it was kind of almost like, you know, you're, you're, you're glad that he's not suffering anymore type of thing, which is, uh, but, but even then, like I said, it's still sad. So hopefully, uh, Hopefully uh, your your uh, grandparents are doing all right. They were good friends. Okay. Actually, I've actually I've had a couple friends die over the years. Unfortunately, it's actually what's worse is I've had friends that have passed away that I lost contact with, and that's a really sad thing, right? I knew I had a buddy. Two of my best, two, two friends that I, I would consider my best friends at the time as I was growing up as a kid. One, when I was probably around 10 to 12, something like that range. He was like my best friend at that, that range. And then we moved away. And then, I, you know, got befriended another guy. And we were best friends all through, pretty much all through high school and stuff. And right after high school, um, I remember when both of those guys passed away at different times. It was, it was, it was, it was sad because I felt bad because I hadn't talked to them in years. But it was also sad because they were, they were my age, right? Like, they were my age at that time. And it's just like, oh man, it kind of, kind of gets you thinking, you know, anything could happen at any point. But again, like I said, can't live in fear. Gotta, that's just, I try not to. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was afraid the first time I dropped my kids off at kindergarten, but then I realized that's just not, it's not a way to live. Gotta, gotta just have a little faith, do the best you can and trust God, I guess at that point. All right. Um, what are we doing here? We just finished dropping off sugar. We got a good chunk of money. We're halfway to buying the cow pin. So that's pro progress. Um, I guess we're ready to fast forward and be ready to harvest soonish. So struggling to deal with your mom's death. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had two of my Two of my very close friends, both of their moms passed away last year, actually, about a month apart. 
And so I was very much struggling with supporting both of them through that difficult time because obviously I, I can understand, you know, the, the, one of them, they knew about it because their mom was dealing with some pretty serious me medical issues. Although they thought, she, the doctor had told them that she thought that she was going to, she was going to make it a little bit, you know, quite a bit longer because she was starting to look a little bit better. And then it just kind of, and then it just happened. But the other one, it was a complete surprise. Um, it was very sad, but it's hard to deal with friends when you see their friends hurting like that. It's, it's rough. But hopefully, hopefully everything's going okay for you. Double A. And, uh, it's never going to be easy. I know that I can, I can understand that again, not necessarily from personal experience, but just from watching my friends and how they struggled. I can definitely understand. All right. Um, what are we doing? Waiting for that. What else? My brain is all over the place. All of a sudden, uh, Hey, I'm McCormick. Eh, it's a nice tractor. I mean, we don't need it. But it would, it would be 310 horsepower. It's not bad, but yeah, we just, there's too much that we need, more than we need. We'll hold off on that. Um, I can't be distracted by used items, <laughs> even though I like to look at them all the time. How are the chickens doing? Ah, uh, we gotta go pick up the eggs, so we will do that. Let me feed the chickens real quick, and then get ready to start doing some harvests again. If I can actually drive straight. That's that. Let's unhook you. Go drop off some green. Not much green, but should have enough to get us to uh, harvest day. Oh, it's time to mow. I was like, I know I'm missing something. It is time to mow. Oh, yes. Birthday coming up. That's rough. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'm glad to glad to hear. I mean, you sound as positive as you can be, so I appreciate uh, that's 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 it's good to see that you're still hold on to some faith that she's in a better place, as you say. So hopefully, she will have a good birthday. Oh wow, and cancer's rough. That's that's sad. I mean, typically with cancer, you do get a little bit of warning, but that doesn't make it easier, right? A lot of times those last months or year or whatever while you're dealing with the cancer are almost worse than, than anything. And it's just, it's hard. That's, that's sad to hear. Um, my brain shut off for a second. What was I about to do? <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to do. I'm going to go check the water. We can do a couple loads while we're waiting for the mowing to get done. I know the survival rates for cancer has gone up, you know, quite a bit in some cases over the years as, medic, as medical technology has advanced, but I sure hope they, I don't know if they ever will, but I sure hope they do find, you know, cures or other things for cancer at some point, because that's just it's one of those worst things we face, right? It's just so, so hard to see.
both my dad and my grandfather actually had prostate cancer, which apparently means that I am more susceptible to it as well. So, in fact, I think I'm supposed to get 45, 40, 45. Like, I think they normally say get checked when you're like 60. But then, like, if your dad had it, you subtract 10 years. And if your grandfather had it, you subtract 20. So maybe I'm supposed to get checked now. I probably should just go get checked. But, um, that's one of those fun things. Although, thankfully, both of them obviously made it through that experience. Okay. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. The fact that cancer can affect so many parts of your body, too. It's just... I don't know. I have to. It's one of those weird things. It's like, why does this? Why does this exist? Type of thing, you know. Oh yeah, when you know when it's when your cancer's terminal, that is that is rough. That is so hard. Which honestly, I do not blame anybody that's dealing with that that type of diagnosis that just says, "Look, I don't want to be on medication. I don't want to go through chemo, none of that." Yeah, could you add a few more months to your life if you did? Sure, but are you miserable for those few months? Probably. So I honestly, I applaud the people that are like, "You know what? Take me off all of it. I want to I want to actually live." For this last, you know, six months, a year, whatever it may be. I think that's uh, probably what I would do, honestly. I'd rather be living even a slightly shorter life knowing that I'm at least somewhat comfortable as opposed to being miserable. Because I know chemo can be very miserable. But it's worth it. I mean, I would say, I would say chemo and all that kind of stuff is probably worth it if, you, if there's a chance of survival. But if there's just no chance, it's just like, what's... Why, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to personally go through that. But yeah, it's rough. All right, almost done with the mowing. Also, I think that's why it's important to live, honestly, every day, you know, the best you can, because you never know when anything could happen, right? I mean, it's, I, I don't think, we, like I said, I don't think we should walk around living in fear, terrified of, you know, everything and anything and everything. But I also don't think we should walk around, you know, try to do our best not to walk around depressed all the time. Because, I mean, and I, I say that having been depressed many times in my life, it's like, how many, how many days, months, years have I wasted in a mindset that, you know, woe is me when I could have just been happy and try to try to find a way to be happy knowing that, you know, life is limited. We all have a limited amount of time to make a, as big of an impact, I guess, as we can.
Just make the most out of your life with whatever you got available. Easier said than done. Trust me, I know that. I, uh... I have not <laughs> made the most of my life all the time, unfortunately. But I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to get better. I mean, I've been pretty vocal on on my YouTube videos about my, and even on the streams about my migraines, you know? Migraines suck. You know, they, they, they hurt. They're painful. They're distracting. They're everything and every, anything and everything. But, and there was a time, I, I there was actually a period of time where I shut down completely emotionally, physically. I just, I, I basically lived in my, my office at home, slept on the couch in my office away from my family because I couldn't deal with, you know, the fact that none of the medicines were working, none of the surgeries were working, nothing was working. So I was very depressed for, you know, probably almost a year there at least. And I mean, I wasn't playing video games. I wasn't doing anything. And you guys know how much I play video games now and how much I love video games. I was doing nothing for probably a good year there. And then finally, I just like, you know what? I'm wasting my, myself. Like, what am I doing? So now do I still have the migraines stuff like that? Sure. But I've, I've tried to get a better mindset about not letting them, you know, be the source of my my bad day, if you will, which is sometimes easier said than done, but I'm doing better about trying to find the joy in every day, even if I'm suffering a little bit. There's plenty of people suffering around the world, so I should I should figure out my, my issues as well. Alrighty, that is that. July is done. Again, we are harvesting next month in August. So let's go. I think I've mentioned before, I'm actually started doing therapy mm, back in October. So I go, you know, do therapy every couple of weeks. Um, it's definitely been a huge help for me. I wish I'd started therapy years ago. I don't know why I didn't. I mean, I guess as a man or as a whatever, you feel like, oh, I can handle this. It's not that bad. I don't want to talk about my feelings, blah, 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 whatever. Whatever excuses you can come up with. But I will definitely say, and no, and no this is not a not an advertisement for BetterHelp.com or anything like that, like you see all over YouTube. Uh, but uh, I would definitely say therapy is worth it, in my opinion. Everybody needs help with something. Nobody's perfect. Um, and dealing with your issues can be very hard by yourself. So I would definitely recommend, if you're even thinking about it, do it. It is, uh, it's been a lifesaver for me as far as just helping me feel better about things, helping me learn how to manage my own emotions. I'd rather be in therapy than take a lot of medication. I'll say, to say that. Yeah, could I, for like depression, stuff like that. Yeah, I know they have depression medication and some people still have to take that. And if they do, then you do, you know, it's, it's fine. And if I, if I still had to take it, I would, if I absolutely had to, but I think so far I've learned, thankfully, the therapy has been enough that I think I can avoid the medication for at least a bit longer. I've been able to manage my own, like I said, my emotions a bit better and self-regulate, if you will. It's life. Life is hard. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this field second. I always forget that I'm... I always forget that I mean to do this field second since I know all of it will go into the chicken coop. You know, the chickens, how are they doing? Doing all right. Cool.
Alrighty, you guys are rolling. Um, it's August. Nothing to sell yet. By the way, how did sugar end up? And we actually went up a bit at the grocery store, but not. I think we lost nineteen dollars. Okay, so we lost a little bit. It's not not significant. I'm not super disappointed, but at least we know in the future we could wait a little bit longer. But I think part of the problem is that. The quote unquote high note over there at 527 was wrong. The fact that it's gone up to 545, uh, that was a little misleading for me. And 80 degrees in the game. That's, uh, it's warmer than it's been here in a long time. We have, I think we got it to 72 on Monday, which actually was felt, felt really nice. It was a good day. 72 and a nice breeze. Can't go wrong with that. Good day for a walk. Or a drive with the top down, which is what I ended up doing that day. Um, okay, yeah. Sorry, I was thinking for a second about what I was going to do. But I am going to groom this trailer over there. This vehicle can transport tree logs. Does it expand? Like lengthwise? Doesn't look like it does, but... That looks like it's just a tiny short one. I remember we used to have... Uh, I used to live in a place... Was very big on... On uh, logging, right? And they used to always have those trailers that would... When they were empty, the trailers would be like really short because they'd be like all compact. But when they were hauling logs, they would pull them out really long for the, the really long log. So that's why I thought that maybe that thing expanded. But I don't think it does. Oh, goodness. Actually pretty tired today. I didn't sleep well last night. Or no, it wasn't last night. It was the night before last night. I tried to catch up on that sleep last night, but only oh, that doesn't work. That doesn't always work too well. We need a lime yet? Does not look like we do.
All right, let's go get this dropped off. Slid down that hill, <laughs> kind of went crooked. That was weird. Alrighty, bread should be going, or flour should be going again, I should say, and that'll turn into bread. Looks good. Hey, Stephen Foster. How's it going? Glad you can join. Be nice to get a second one of these harvesters to get the stuff going faster, but I don't know if we could justify that anytime soon at all, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, I mean, the one we got is what, 70 grand? The wrong button. Turn off the engine instead of turning off the harvester. the grass will grow on its own after using the landscaping tool it should not cost money oh i agree i agree um it's annoying that it just looks like dead whatever <laughs> it's very annoying
It used to grow on its own in FS19, if I remember correctly. But I don't know why they changed it for FS22. Well, assuming you painted with the grass tool, which is what I always do. Oh yeah, money's getting there. We're we're halfway to the cow barn now. Now can't buy the cows yet, but we're halfway to being able to buy the cow barn. Actually, I think there's a good chance we'll be able to buy the cow barn this year. Right, once we sell the eggs and sell the bread and the silage, I think we will. Um, I'm trying to think, do we want to flip over to wheat or barley soon? I want to say barley is the choice you want to go with if you want to do both flour and have straw. I think it's barley. Yeah, we might want to start planting barley on here just to be safe going forward. On at least one of the fields. The other one can stay sorghum for now. Well, no, there's no point. There's no point in keeping it sorghum because we want extra straw. If we, if we can get extra straw, that'd be nice. I'll have to think about that one. One field of straw should be enough, actually, think, as I think about it. Decide exactly what the end goal is. I know cakes, obviously, but is there a dollar amount or setting up your farm with the cows and stuff? We're not sure yet. Uh, probably like a million dollars off the cakes or something like that. I don't know. I haven't really decided. I'm not sure how long it'll take to get a million dollars off of cakes because you can only make so many cakes uh, a cycle, right? It's not even so much that the inputs. We'll have plenty of inputs. It's the outputs that we'll, we'll, we'll struggle with. Honestly, I don't remember what the uh, cake... Is it... A th is it a thousand cake or is it a, a different ratio? Because it feels weird it would be a thousand. Because cakes obviously aren't spit out in liters, right? So I don't know if it's a thousand units of cakes. Sales for $35.91. If that's the case, that's that's a really cheap cake. That seems wrong, right? A thousand units of cakes would be $3.50 per cake. Like that's, that's a very cheap cake. So I'm not sure exactly what the uh, ratio here is of like what the buy ratio for cakes is. Once I figure that out, then I'll figure out a good dollar amount for us to shoot for. Normally, what I would say is that we'll get to cakes and then we'll we'll go until we can buy all the equipment, you know, because usually I'm leasing equipment. But in this case, I'm actually buying all my equipment, so we will have everything bought. I could do a test run. Um, can't I? Yeah. Uh... Oh, it's right here. I think I can get the little... Isn't there a place I can... No, I, I guess there's not. Not for an output. I was thinking there's a way I could, like, buy a bunch of cakes and see how much they sell for. I'm not going to do it. I would, like, do it and then... Like, I would save the game, try it out, and then... And then go from there. But I don't... It doesn't look like we can buy cakes in any way. 
Actually, I can go back to the original Elm Creek. I still have that save file. And that'll tell me what the cakes sell at. Because I, I, have, I have that all set up to make cakes. Actually, we might do that before we end the stream. Because it's been a long time since I've looked at that save file. I don't remember how we how we ended things there, to be honest. You guys probably do, because you guys have watched the videos more recently than I have recorded them. But uh, I might go look at that just to, so I can remind myself how the cakes work and things like that. But if it's a thousand liters, like we're not going to get a thousand liters a month, right? We would have to have 200 cycles a month to get a thousand liters of cakes. Like that's sad. Like if it's, if it's 3,500 bucks for a thousand liters, then you make nothing off of cakes, which would be really, again, I don't remember. That might be exactly how it works, but that would be really bad. I would have to imagine it's better because if you look at it, um, you make 4,000 liters of, or 4,000 units of bread, and bread sells for, what, 20-something or something like that? There's no reason why the cakes would sell for less per, per per month or something like that. That just... I don't think that would be the case. So, we'll take a look at it. Oh, yeah, nice. Well, a lot of, actually, a lot of people have watched that series. That's definitely my most popular series, but I'm glad, glad to hear that you were able to watch that and, and join off of that. That's awesome. I'm really happy with redoing that series and I definitely think I've done better. The only thing I would change is find the right balance between leasing and owning, not leasing so much that we go too far into debt, but find that balance. And I think, I think I went too far the, the other way in this save. In the first run, I was leasing and borrowing and do all sorts of stuff. Like I was so in debt and it was just, it was a mess. In this run, I think I went too far the other direction, which it slowed it down a lot, which is fine. It's not a big deal. But uh, I think I think there's a good balance between the two. That would be a good sweet spot. And truth be told, the only reason I would even do the leasing at all is to speed up the, the process. I mean, if I was doing this not on a live stream, if I was just doing this as a recording or even just on my own, I probably don't care that it takes a little bit longer. But from a live stream standpoint, I kind of want to speed things up a bit. And the best way to speed things up is to lease equipment because you can lease sooner and you can lease bigger equipment. Am I too far to start leasing now? I mean, there's really not much for me to lease now. 
The most I would lease now would be another harvester just to speed this process up. Maybe a second sugar beet harvester to speed that process up. The planters are okay. The cedar's okay. We don't need another water. Like, there's a lot of things that we have that we don't need to lease. Oh, I was not paying attention. Um, and, uh, so yeah, there's a lot that we have that we don't need to lease. Uh, we'd be able to lease the, the cow equipment, right? The, uh, the, uh, TMR mixer and things like that. That would save us a little bit of time there. But honestly, we're so close to the end now. There's really no point in starting to lease now at this point because we're, it wouldn't save us a significant amount of time, I don't think. Again, other than having a second of each harvester. How much would it cost me to lease one of these basic harvesters? Like, we don't need anything crazy. We just need a basic one. 3600 bucks. We wouldn't basically, we would not be using it for a full hour. So, not bad, honestly. Not a bad idea. But, we've come this far. We might as well see it through to the end. And know that we never, never had debt and never had a, had a lease we had to pay for ever. Fertilize this yet? Did not. I can't remember if we're out of fertilizer or not. We got a little bit over here. That one is herbicide.
Out of principle at this point, yeah. <laughs> it kind of is out of principle. What is with this hill? That's the second time that's happened. I'm not sure what I'm hitting that's making me suddenly flip sideways. Wait, what? Did I not just run this over this and it didn't fertilize at all? I'm kind of confused. Oh, I bet I know why. Okay, I was like, I was like very confused. I was like, uh, all right, we just haven't, we got to rebuy this. Which was a better, easier way to know this that, but that's all right. Not a, I mean, the good news is that it didn't fertilize anything because it didn't know to fertilize anything. It's just a little funny. So I didn't like waste fertilizer or anything. I think that's the only thing I don't like about the precision farming is having to rebuy those soil samples every few cycles. Like, I get in real life. I mean, if, if it would actually change anything, it would be cool. Like, if if like if this if this map would change, right? Um, to reflect that you know, as time goes by, soil will change over time. But since it never changes, that there's just no point in make us rebuy that, honestly. <laughs>
Alrighty, fertilizing is done. Alright, let's drop some stuff off for the chickens. Although I don't think they're that hungry at the moment. Took most of that. That's good. Looks like we do have some eggs to pick up. Let me grab those. Kind of weird that most of the time the planters are some of the biggest seeding type devices you can get. So obviously that planter is wider than the cedar we got, <laughs> but our harvester for the sugar beets is smaller. I guess sugar beets aren't the only thing you plant, but still. 
was a little bit backwards. What is the biggest cedar you can buy? Probably like be one of these, right? That one's 23, 23 meters. 30 meters. Wow. That is insane. 30 meters. Okay, well then that definitely is bigger than the planters. I don't think there's a 30 meter planter anywhere. I think the biggest planter is those 18 meters. So yeah, that's, that's, but to be fair, those are very rare. And I don't think I've ever used one of those ginormous planters or cedars. Usually I go with like the 12 meter cedars and the, but the 18 meter planter is definitely something I've used. Trying to look up to see how much, like the what the yearly take amount you can get is. Apparently you get 200% profit from cakes. Well, that's the, that's the running theory. Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out for sure. I mean, the good thing about it is that since the cakes are not going to use up all of the inputs, um, like the bakery itself isn't going to use up all the inputs, because it can only use so much, we will have plenty of ingredients to sell just the ingredients, right? We'll have flour, we'll have, you know, milk, sugar, all those things. We'll have plenty of that to sell because we really only need, you know, 400 per month. So what, 4,800 per year? So let's call it 5,000 just to be safe. If we had 5,000 liters of everything, anything above 5,000 liters we can sell. Which will sell for a lot of money. Hey, well, have a great night. Thanks, thanks, Stephen, for dropping by.
Let me sure the pH is still good in both of these fields, which it is. All right, almost done with the harvesting, finally. Alrighty, that is the sorghum. All right, I don't think there's anything else for us to do today, so our next activity will be to harvest the sugar beets in two months. 
and that's that. We don't sell anything until after that, so yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not true. Um, two months, we harvest the sherbets and and we mow, so we actually do both of those at the same time. There's really much to do this month. Speaking of giant cedars, we got one. What is that? It's a collector. Collect sugar beets from the ground. Right, bread's coming along fine. A little bit of flour left to gather. Right, get you rolling. Let's go pick up some eggs and then we'll start you mowing. Grab the sugar beet trader, make sure it's over by the other guy real quick, since he's full.
All right, you're good to go. You're doing all right. I'll let you do another pass or so, and then we'll start going the other direction. Actually, since we just finished a full row, we'll just go ahead and get you going the other direction now. I think one more round of selling sugar is all we're going to need for a while. I mean, I don't know if we, we might just do one more round of sugar beets after that and then just stop and do other things because, uh, we just don't need much. We, that we're going to fill in that bakery up with one round of sugar is going to last us pretty much until the end of the, end of the run. And we could keep selling the sugar, but I mean, sugar is not the most profitable thing to do based on the time it takes to do it. So if we do, I mean, I'm okay with doing sugar now because we need it for, um, we're going to need it here anyway. We might as well get used to the cycle. There's a little toy in here. You know what? Why not? 
I'll collect a little toy. <laughs> since I since I found it. Uh, but yeah, if we uh once we actually get the cows ready to go and we're ready to start making cakes, at that point it's might as well just make profit of whatever we need profit for. I don't know exactly how much it's going to hold on sugar here. I mean, if it's same as the flour, which it may or may not be, it's going to be quite a bit. So we'll see. All right, we'll get this loaded up. Uh, probably won't drop it off yet. We'll wait till it gets full, I guess.
We're going to have the wind rower get that started. So much sugar beets on these fields. Takes forever. Alright, gotta empty out the trailer. Can come back, finish this in a moment.
All right, finish up the windrowing, start the baling. Probably get all the baling done long before we have to be done with the sugar beets. It takes so long. Tractor's going to need to be repaired again soon.
you dropped off. Making some progress. Still a long ways to go. back from riding a bike well that sounds like fun although i personally have not ridden a bike in 20 years probably last time i rode a bike i was in switzerland riding a bike up a mountain in switzerland is uh it's not not the easiest thing to do uh probably just as difficult is riding a bike down a mountain in switzerland because you start going very fast, and it's very scary. Hey, Veronica, how's it going? I'm playing your favorite game. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad to, to hear that. It's awesome. Army Simulator is a fun game. Do I play Fortnite? I do not play Fortnite. My kids want to play Fortnite, but I have not let them yet. <laughs> so I also have not gotten into Fortnite. I feel like my kids are a little bit young. I mean, maybe not. They're not necessarily too young to play the game itself. I'm, I'm just not ready to let my kids into the online world of online video games. So maybe someday.
put a parental control so they don't talk to people. Yeah, I might, I might try that then. I hadn't really looked at it enough to know that that was a possibility, but it makes sense that it would be, because obviously Fortnite is a game that would appeal to kids, so it would be smart of them to put controls on there so they can't talk to people that are, uh, you know, people online are not are not nice sometimes. So <laughs> trying to protect them from that for as long as I can. Yeah, it's good to know. I'll have to take a look at that then. Oh, they can play offline too. That's good to know. Don't play Fortnite or... I just read what you said there. Don't play Fortnite. Let your kids play Fortnite. They'll get addicted as well and spend all your money. <laughs> well, that's definitely not going to happen. They, they are not allowed to spend all my money. That's not... not, not I, I'm, I'm the only one that can spend all my money on video games. Sorry. And Legos. I spend all my money on Legos too. What can I say? Yes, I'm basically a an adult child. Video games and Legos. Parents said they are not allowed. You're not allowed to spend money on games. So yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I, I buy my kids all sorts of stuff. I spoil them, so I think I could put my foot down about a few things, and they shouldn't get too upset. I mean, they will get upset, but they shouldn't. <laughs> Key difference there. But no, I, uh, we we they get all sorts of stuff. They got more stuff than I had when I was growing up. That's for sure. When I was growing up, the best I had was um, my old Super Nintendo on a played on a little dinky 13-inch television, tiny, tiny TV, and that was, that's 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 how I lived my early years. I didn't have my first PC till I was old enough to get a job. Oh, I went the wrong way. I don't know where I was going. My brain was off in another world. Sad thing is, my kids would have their own money to spend as well. 
If they would just do their chores every day. <laughs> I had to stop giving them their allowance because they wouldn't do their chores. Like, fine. If I'm going to have to twist your arm to get you to do your chores, then, then you're not going to get paid for it. <laughs> Once you guys can start start uh, showing some responsibility, then I don't mind giving you some money. Which is, again, more than I ever got. When I was a kid, I had to do my chores and I didn't get money. I had no allowance. My kids are spoiled. Cut people's lawns to get money. That's actually a good good way to do it. That's that's a good way to show some responsibility. Do some hard work and you feel like you've earned whatever you buy. I think that's a good way to go about it. I don't know. At least for me, I always thought that money, at least when I was younger, money felt better and buying stuff felt better when I actually had to do something to earn it. Um... Now that I'm older and I have to pay bills and taxes and all that kind of stuff, it feels a little bit less enjoyable. But definitely when I was a kid, it was uh, very enjoyable to spend money that I felt like I earned. Remember when I was a kid, my grandfather, you know, the, the one that did the farming... Anytime he had a, a soda, he would just throw the can out onto the onto the farm, right? He would just throw it out, you know. He didn't care; it's his farm. So he just so he just he would just drink the soda, toss the can out on the ground, uh, because once a year, every time that I would go visit him, once a year, I would go around and collect all of his soda cans all around his farm. I mean, it would be four, five, six, seven bags. I mean, it would be tons of bags of of cans of aluminum cans, and then I could take them to the to the place that uh, would give me money for the aluminum cans and I would make myself, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks, which for me as a kid was a lot of money and I'd get to go, go buy something. It was just so much fun. My grandfather drank a lot of soda. <laughs> well, him and his, his other farm hands, I guess. See the extra percentage of this thing is damaged. This is the Volvo. No, this is the not the Volvo, it's the uh Voltra. 13%. Alright. We'll get when we get down to like five percent, I'm probably gonna have to rush it over to the to the store. Hopefully we're done with this harvest by then though. Hey, Porta, how's it going?
I actually use this autosave as a, a good stopping point for this because I'm actually going to I want to jump over to my original Elm Creek run just to kind of check out the cakes and see because uh, we talked about that earlier I wanted to take a, take a look at the cakes just kind of remind myself myself where that where that run ended up and uh, kind of go from there I don't yeah we'll just leave it like that that's fine Take a look at this, see what this looks like. I just kind of want to get, get an idea of what our goals for this live stream will be as far as like how much cakes we expect, how much money we're going to make, all that kind of stuff. Plus, like I said, just remind myself what this run looked like. You guys have seen it more recently than I have because I have not rewatched these videos or anything. It's going to be our goal is to finish up in a similar spot, more or less. Oh, I forgot we had this mower. That's awesome. And a semi truck and everything. My goodness, we had all sorts of stuff on this run. There's our oh, try. We had the silage thing. Got the barn. There's our chickens. Same tractor. <laughs> I didn't. Remember. No, no, no. Sorry, this is the this is the tractor I have on my my uh my Zalanka run. That's right. Oh, nice class class harvester. Nice. Had some good stuff on this one. All right, let's see here. Let's. Where's the I know we had two bakeries here. I remember that. There's our sugar and our uh, grain mill. A little bit different setup there. But yeah, our bakeries. How much? We obviously had the dairy for the butter. Makes sense. And there's the cakes. We got plenty of stuff here for the cakes except for the flour. Um... Probably what I want to do is... I don't think we have any cakes over here yet, do we? Oh, we do have some cakes. Okay. That's actually the best thing to do is just... Let's go sell some cakes and see what... What the pricing looks like for cakes. So that way we have a better idea of... How much we're going to be making... Going forward. The one pallet here is... 400 liters. Okay. Okay. unload that and then I'm going to um let's go over here and just pick up cakes by themselves I think I'd like to try and pick up one cake but I don't think that's going to be very easy Maybe. Did we just get one? We got one. <laughs> All right. 400 liters of cakes or 400 units of cakes or whatever it is. And how much do they sell for right now? It's currently at the fast food restaurant selling for 34.39 for some quantity. Let's find out what that quantity actually is. All right, so it is per thousand. Wow. Wait, no, it's not. Is it thirteen seventy five? Feels like the math's still wrong. No, okay, that's right. So it is still it is per thousand liters. Wow, cakes are so bad. I mean, cakes are worth a lot of profit based on the inputs. But quantity of cakes sold per, you know, cycle is very low because you've only get, you know, 192 times five. You get just under a thousand liters per month. And if you sold them at the best price, you know, which whatever is called 
dollars. You know, ah, you're still making 42, 42 grand per bakery is basically what it comes down to. 42,000 bucks per bakery. Not bad. Oh, no, I think I did that wrong. I just realized. $41,000 per bakery. Um, $41,000 per bakery. So you can make you can make a good money if you had... I would have to get a second bakery to make any amount of good money off of the cakes. But again, the other good thing about... I guess the other side effect of the cakes is that you can sell all the other ingredients, right? You're, you're, you're not... You're making so many ingredients that the amount that you're going to be putting into the, uh, the cakes themselves is minimal per year, right? Uh, what map am I playing on? I've been playing on Elm Creek. And this is this is my original Elm Creek run. Um how many farm how many fields did we have on this run? We had so same fields. So we had all the same fields, all of these. Very similar. We're almost we're almost to the end point here. We did have much we had some nicer equipment here because obviously this mower is ridiculously good. And some of these other bits and pieces are a little bit better than what we've had, but some of them are actually the same. We've got the same wind rower. Cool. All right. Well, I'm happy with that. Uh, I think we call the stream a little bit early, just because. Uh, I don't know. Just no reason to jump back over. I just wanted to see how much the cake sold for, get an idea of how much money we think we'd make. I'm still kind. Of, once we start making cakes, what I want to do is get to a million bucks. I think between the cakes and all the other ingredients, I think we can get to a million bucks. I think that's still possible. So that's going to be my my goal. A million dollars. Once we start making cakes again, we might want a second bakery. Just to speed things up, we'll see. But uh, we'll make we'll, we'll make it work. We're almost there. Just got to get to the cows, and and then it's it. We're done. We're, once we get the cows and the the dairy, we're, we're, we've we've got it all set. Alrighty. Well, I'm gonna go. To, like I said, a few minutes early. Not a big deal. Um, I'll put a cut in there. When we come back, we'll finish up the harvesting the sugar beets. Shouldn't take that long in the next stream, and then we'll be able to sell the eggs, the silage, the bread and possibly be able to buy the cow pen in the next stream which is going to be that much closer to uh to where we want to be so i do appreciate everybody that came out today and chatted or just decided to watch or watch the vod i appreciate it all and like i said i'll be i'll see you guys next saturday for the next live stream which will be civilization six monday again is football manager and my next farming simulator will be next wednesday uh, but again i appreciate it everybody may god bless you and i hope you join me again next time goodbye